Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a Wayworld Outreach welcome to the Mets Hall of Famer, Daryl Strawberry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the glory, it's the glory that we give to God is the most important thing. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because he's such a good God, he's such a good father. You know what? He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He's giving you another opportunity. There's nothing like it when God gives you another opportunity. So, you know, so many times we take that for granted like we're just supposed to wake up. We're just supposed to be here and something good's going to happen. If it had not been for God waking me up this morning, I wouldn't be here. I want to get honor and praise to the man of this house, Pastor Garcia. Thank you for having me, Father's Day. Thank you. What a... What a, great, what a great leader. You know, I, I spent time in the back with him, and, and he, just, he just has it. You know, either you have it or you don't. You know, you can't fool me. I've been around. <laughs> and not that he's trying to fool me, but he's such a good leader. He's such a, uh, you know, a leader for the body of Christ, a leader for church. And, you know, he's... Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. But let me say this. He's trying to get something in your hand, your pastor. And what he's trying to get in your hand will last forever. You know, it's biblical principles. It's not anything else. You know, we live in a society where everybody's chasing after foolishness. And they need to be chasing down Jesus more than anything. Let us pray. Glory to God. Father, we thank you, we love you, we honor you, praise you. Father, you're such a good God. There is no one like you. Father, we express our feelings for you because of all that you have done. Father, you give us grace when we don't deserve it. You give us mercy when we don't deserve it. And you bring peace to us when we don't deserve it. Why? Because you love us. No matter what the circumstances are in our life, we come here today to surrender ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to you and may you do a mighty work on this Father's Day. May some walk out of here today and never be the same that they have come to church and thought they were coming to meet Daryl Strawberry, but they came to meet Jesus. Bless them right now, right where they're at. And we give you honor and glory. We send this petition up to you, Father, and we ask that you seal it over the body of Christ and your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Praise God for you. Thank God for this day, Father's Day, all you fathers out there. God is celebrating you. He's celebrating you because he created you and he created you for this time and he has a plan and purpose for your life. See, I love God because God does not make mistakes. You know, we as the people, we make the, stake, make the mistakes and we are the ones that fall short. And God comes in and he swoops in and he picks us up and he changes us forever. And hopefully somebody will have that encounter today with God where God will touch your heart and you will come down at the end of the service to the cross. See, because you can't get victory until you come to the cross. You can accomplish everything you want to accomplish from the natural, but you can't accomplish what's coming from the supernatural until you come to the cross. See, I accomplished everything in the natural when I played Major League Baseball and winning championships. That's all natural. That's not supernatural. That's a natural thing we watch and see. But the supernatural is the, what Christ will do in your life, and then you get the revelation of who you are, and then you become everything that God wants you to become. Then you understand who is Jesus. Who is Jesus? That's what I used to ask myself the question all the time. Who is Jesus? Well, I can't know Jesus if until I enter in with Jesus. 
He's a man that hung on the cross at Calvary. He shed his blood for you and me. He went to the tomb, and early Sunday morning, he got up from the tomb, and when he got up, he got up with all power in his hand. So what is he telling me? He's telling me when you die from the flesh of who you are, you get to be just like Christ. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, it is Christ who lives in me. Christ rules and reigns. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. By his stripes, you get to be healed. This is not a show. This is about God. God is not a show. God is real. Everything else is foolishness. But God is real. He will always be the same God. He's never going to change. He's looking for people that are, he's looking for people that are available. People that make themselves available to God. God will take you and use you mightily for his work. See, oh, glory to God. See, I preach Jesus because, see, I met Jesus. I had an encounter with Jesus, and he changed my life. He changed the course of my life forever. I was the sinner that needed a Savior. So when I recognized that I was a senior, sinner and I needed a Savior, I came and surrendered myself to Christ finally. Finally. I never had to pick up a drug again. I never had to pick up a drink again. I never put a needle in my arm again. I never abused my kids or families anymore. See, we abuse our kids and our families with our selfishness and what we do from a worldly perspective. As a man, I'm talking about a man. God will crown you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, and he will pour his spirit into you, and you will become a different man. You will become born again. If you allow Jesus to rescue, redeem, and restore you, he rescues you from your sinful way, he redeems you by his blood, and he restores you with his grace. What is grace? Grace is something you don't deserve, and he gives it to you anyway. Oh, hallelujah. Man, this Jesus is a bad dude. He's better than anybody, any athlete. You know why? Because he conquered death. And you know why? The man has never had no sin in him. See, it's okay to be able to recognize and understand who you are. I had to understand that I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Because you can't save yourself from sin. The Bible said we all will fall short of the glory of God. But Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that means Jesus will take your sinful ways, and he will heal you from those sinful ways, and you no longer have to live like that anymore. See, the devil been lying to us for a very long time, telling us about this life where you could just live any old kind of way, you could just be any old kind of way. See, the devil won't company. He fooling folks because he won't company. He forgot to tell me, by the way, at the end of my life that, I, by the way, you was coming with me. But see, God stepped in and swooped me up, and he pulled me out of the pit and put me in the pulpit. See, when you let Christ come in and sweep in and pick you up, you no longer have to live with those desires no more. I no longer have those worldly desires. I am a kingdom man. I am an epistle of Christ. I am written not in words. I mean, in the Word, not in letters, not in ink. But I am a pistol of Christ, and that's what you become when you allow yourself to be trained up and discipled. I'm going to get to this message in a minute. i got plenty of time for you. I'm never short of the message because you know why I don't even have to preach it. The Holy Spirit is going to preach it for me. <laughs> All I got to do is show up. And see, that's one, one thing you will learn about yourself when you come to Christ and have the relationship and you're all in with God. You don't have to straddle that fence no more, you know, like most of us. You know, I got tired of being a hypocrite, straddling the fence, saying Jesus, but I'm denying his power and his finished work on the cross. I know his name, but I deny his power. Like so many of us, you know his name, but you deny, you deny his power. And you wonder why um, I'm not living a victorious life. Ever since I've been 
walking with Jesus, I've been living a victorious life. There's no other life to live. Why? Because what Jesus has set up for you is a victory in life. Victory over everything. Not some things. I'm not just talking about some things. I'm talking about everything. This message I'm going to bring to you is a clear message of what's important to why you need to know who Jesus is. Because it's called when things happen. When things happen in your life, when you're falling short in life, when things happen, when you got marriage problems, when you got job loss, when you got sickness, you got kids' problems, financial problems, who are you trusting? So you can't trust, trust the situations. You got to be able to learn to trust God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 talks about it. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Then it says, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your what? He shall direct your path. Because I love God so much. See, God already had a plan before I was even born. See, God already knew I would be a preacher. (laughs) Hallelujah. Everybody thought it was the Baseball Hall of Fame. No, God said, I want you in the Hall of Faith. I don't want you in the Hall of Fame. I want to take you to another place where you become a soul winner for me and you bring people into the kingdom of God. See, God will train you up to be everything that he created you to be. God already knew that I'd be standing in the pulpit preaching. See, that's why my mama was praying for me when I was living a heathen lifestyle, playing Major League Baseball and winning championships and having all kinds of money, living behind community gates. And my mother was laying on her face and she was dying and she was praying to God that God would save me. And she would die at the age of 55 and she would go home and be with the Lord. See, mama had to die so I can live. See, I'm living the legacy that my mother prayed for. She wasn't praying for Daryl Strawberry, the baseball player. She was praying for Daryl Strawberry, her son, a sinner that needed a savior. She was praying that, God, you would intervene and you would touch his life and you would stop him and you would save my son. And I'm standing here today because of her prayers. There's nothing great about me. Somebody's been praying for you that you here today. That you would get this, that one day you would go into the church and you would hear messages of the gospel and you would change your life forever. Because that's what the gospel will do. The gospel will change you forever. It doesn't mean you're a bad person or anything. It means that I needed to have a revelation of Christ. A real revelation of Christ for myself, not for somebody else telling me who Christ is, but for myself. And when you have that revelation of Christ for yourself, you will never experience anything greater than that. See, the people of the church, you need to get back to tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. You need to stop eating Burger King and start eating steak. Burger King and hamburgers, that's just going to blow your stomach out, right? Send you to the bathroom. But when you eat this steak here, You know what happens? It transforms you. It transforms you into being a true believer, a true follower of Christ. Not just saying his name, but understanding the man. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. First, you need to trust him with all your heart. Not some of your heart, not halfway, not trying to use your intelligence over it to overthink the Bible. Because one thing I do know about this Bible, you can't take away from it and you can't add to it. And you have to learn how to eat what's in it and take it for yourself, not for somebody else. See, this is not about trying to get somebody else saved. This is not trying to get somebody else right with Christ. See, my wife, she was right with Christ, and I was still out there living a heathen life in in, in many years, and she was banging on doors in South Florida, pulling me out of dope houses. I'm shooting dope, smoking crack, $3 million in debt. She banging on doors saying, God's got a plan for you. I says, why don't you let God just leave me here and let me die? She goes, you're just not that lucky. (laughs) Well, I'm sure glad I just wasn't that lucky. Because if you think about where God has brought you from and where you're at today, if you really thought about that, you shouldn't be here. See, if we go back to the Old Testament, 
before Christ came in, God just used to wipe cities out. Sinners, you don't want to obey, just wipe them out. Wipe, just done with it. But he brought the gospel in, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He brought the gospel in, he brought Jesus in, and he brought Jesus in to extend the grace for everybody. So everybody can come and experience the freedom. I'm free because of grace. I'm not free because of anything else. You free because of grace. See, when you really truly understand what grace is, then you'll understand who Jesus is. Grace is something you don't deserve and he's giving it to you anyway. So you must trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It's like so many of us, we always want to be in our own understanding. I got this. I know what I'm doing. I used to be like that too. I got it. Well, I'm, I'm well because I'm rich. I'm famous. I can get what I want, but I can't get well on the inside because money don't make you well. Money is just buy you stuff for the outside to make you look, dress up and try to look good. And you know what we try to do? We try to dress up and look good and cover up what's really broken on the inside. Because there's only one person who can make you well on the inside, that's Christ himself. You, you can't make yourself well. You know why? You know why we can't make ourselves well? It's because of his blood. The blood of him shedding on the cross and hanging at Calvary. He's shedding his blood and the scribes and the Pharisees are sitting there and they're mocking him, talking about him. And he's saying to them, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Then he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? But his last words on the cross were so profound. When he made it complete, he said, it is finished. Everything that was killing us, Jesus already killed it. I'm here to tell you, anxiety, fear, doubt, loneliness, Jesus already killed it. He's killed it. He's crushed it. Why? Because he is king. Why? Because he cares about people. Why? Who did Jesus hang with when he was walking the face of the earth? Who did he hang with? He hung out with the sinners, the broken, the lost, the wounded. We are a nation where we act like the scribes and Pharisees, like we all that in a bag of chips and I got it all going on. Well, the devil's been lying forever. Jesus talks about it in John 10, 10. He said, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundant. You know what abundant life he's going to give you? I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you knowledge. I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you something far greater than stuff. Because stuff is not going to get you into the kingdom. I've never seen a Cadillac or a Range Rover get into the kingdom. I've never seen a bank account come rolling up and going to get you into the kingdom. Because we all will come to that place where your name will be called and death will be coming. Are you prepared for it? You know, we live in a society where we are just killing each other. Killing each other. Why? Because we don't know the Savior. We know everything else, but we don't know Him. Why? Because we don't apply ourselves to His principles. We apply ourselves to worldly principles. We apply, our, we, we apply ourselves to being cool and being this, and I want to be that and be that. But the devil forgot to tell me, I want you coming with me in hell, and it's hot down here. He want company. But I'm telling you right now, he ain't getting my company. So if you decide to give him your company, that will be on you. But I made a decision, he can't have my company. Once about the time he had me in that place where he had me and I was gonna be his company, but oh, the blood. Had it not been for the blood of Jesus, 
the rescue blood, the redeeming blood of Jesus that comes into your life and changes everything about your thought process and make you a better man. See, there's a better man on the other side of what I used to do. This is not about what you do. It's about who you become and who you follow. See, a society, this is not popular to this society. What's popular to the society is live any kind of way, do whatever you want, but you can pick your sins, baby, but you cannot pick the consequences. Because everybody's going to get the consequences regardless of who you are. It's not about a black thing, a white thing, a Spanish thing, an Asian thing. This is about a holy thing. This is about this holy book. This is about the Word of God. What did the Word of God say? Heaven and earth going to pass away, but not my Word. Everything going to pass away, but this Word is not going to pass away. I'm going to always take my Word, and I'm going to put it down to somebody. I'm going to pour my spirit down in them. I'm going to crown them from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet because they decided that they wanted to follow me. They wanted to deny themselves and pick up their cross and follow me and follow the biblical principles and live according to my will and not the standards of this world because the darkness is here. Oh, I just need to preach sometime. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, folks want you to come to church and, yeah, I could be talking like this and make you feel good. But what good is that going to do you if the Holy Spirit doesn't penetrate your heart? Because, see, you're going to walk right out of here and you're going to still be the same and nothing's changed. But when you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost, because you do know the Holy Ghost is God too, Right? When you have an encounter with him, now he will teach you. Remember Jesus said when he was getting ready to ascend, he was ascending to heaven. He says, I'm going to send one to you, the comforter. He's going to teach you all things in remembrance of me. See, men need to get back to laying their life down to Christ. We lay our life down to everything but Christ. We lay our life down to this foolishness here. We lay our life down to the news, the politicians, but we won't lay our life down to the king. See, when you lay your life down to the king, now you receive his goods. And nothing tastes like his goods. See, he has great revelation that comes from his kingdom, you know. When you understand the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added into you. You know that God has added everything into my life since I seeked after him? Since I shut the noise off of a society, of opinions. See, I'm not here, glory to God. I'm not here to debate anybody about Jesus. Jesus is Lord over my life. I'm not here to try to convince you who he is. I'm trying to show you that he's waiting for you. And when you decide to make that decision with him, you'll be able to live the promises over your life. The promises of my life were far greater than just Major League Baseball. I understand God gave me the platform for Major League Baseball and gave me the platform to fall short because he knew that he would rescue me and that he would restore me to wholeness and righteousness with him. See, he knows the plan away ahead of you. His thoughts are not like your thoughts. His ways are not like your ways. His ways, oh, glory to God. His ways is God works behind the scene. He can easily be out front if he wanted to. But he needs to know that if I give you my goods, can I trust you with them? See, God wouldn't have never put me in this pulpit until I sat for seven years and go through discipleship and get developed. You know why? Because he told me one thing about getting in this pulpit. And he said, I don't want you playing in this pulpit. I'll never forget it. He says, I'm going to put you in this pulpit, but I don't want you playing in this pulpit. He says, it's not a game. He said, the enemy will take a chokehold and he put it around your neck and he'll choke you to death and he'll kill you. 
So it's nothing to play with. So when things do happen, I need to learn to trust in the Lord and lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct my path. He's, he will direct you the way you need to go. And that's a process to be able to walk out with God. See, we too fast and we, we're opinionated about all these other things, earthly things, and we're opinionated about worldly things, and, and we don't have no opinion about biblical things because we don't know biblical things. But we want to debate against the biblical things and we want to fight against them and we don't even know them. Oh, I know I'm in the right place. People want to say I know God, but I don't truly live for God. Your life should be a living example if you live for Christ. And what I mean by that, then that means people going to persecute you. That's what they say about me. They persecute me all the time. They're like, oh, he's just a Jesus freak. Well, when I was a heathen, you was raving about me. Now that I love Jesus, you're raving about me. Just get over it. They're going to rave about you anyway. Why worry yourself about it and just go ahead and follow this way and have victory over the enemy? See, I got victory over the enemy. I'm, I'm not worried about the enemy. I rebuke that devourer over my children's life. I crown them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. I plead the blood over all my kids. My daughter's here today. My granddaughter's here today. My future son-in-law's here today. His kids are here today. I pray for them because I know I want God to cover their life. I know this is not a game. I don't need them to applaud me for it, but they need to know I'm in the back, of, back scene like my mother was, praying. Why? Because prayer is the answer to all supplication. Might not be for you to see what happens. See, my mother don't get to see. My mother looking at me, she's like, oh, look at him, God. You got a hold of him, didn't you? <laughs> exactly what I was praying for. So some of you mothers in here, do not stop praying. I don't care if your kids are out there lost or whatever. I was lost in a bigger way than you could ever imagine. Why? Because we look at celebrities and they got money so they can do whatever they want. And everybody think, well, there's no consequences coming for them. Oh, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. They're coming. You might not see them in the natural, but they're coming. Because you got to meet God when you die. They are coming. You may think they don't get them here, but they, you will get them. Why? Because the Word of God says that. At the end of the day, did I walk with God? Did I trust God? Did I know the way? John 14, 6 says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. See, we're going through everything to try to get to everything instead of going through Jesus. Jesus telling us he's the way. Amen. He's the way to everything. He's the way to your success, your achievements, everything. Hey, I've been blessed ever since I've been following Jesus. Blessed, multiplied, increased ever since I've been following Jesus. Never lost sleep, never lost worry. Yeah, I might have been through some storms. Yeah, storms are part of it. You're going to go through some storms. But as long as you don't drown in the storm, you're going to come out on the other side. But if you don't have Christ as your Savior, your true Savior, and you don't understand John 3.30, which says, he must increase, I must decrease. He must increase, I must decrease. What is decrease? You need to die of the flesh. Boy, I can tell you, the flesh is one stupid hallelujah. That flesh is one stupid joker, man. Because you know what that flesh crave for? Everything that is not of God. That flesh craved to feed me, feed me, feed me. Give me more of this. Give me another drink. Give me another fix. Give me another smoke. Give me another this. See, how do I know that? Because I've been there and done that. But I hadn't picked up none of that in 20 years now. Why? Because of my encounter with Christ. I have surrendered my life to God, and that's the best thing a man can give to himself. 
if I can give some of you men in here what I got, it is so good. It is the best gift I've ever received in my life. You thought I hit a home run when I played baseball? I hit a home run when I gave Jesus as Lord of my life. And what I'm talking about there is I'm talking about an eternal home run. Eternal. I am sealed and will be delivered one day. I know where I'm going. There's no second doubts about it. I don't have to question myself about it. When I leave here, absence from the body will be present with the Lord, and I will be sitting with the Lord, and hopefully he will say to me one day, well done, my good and faithful servant. You had many trials and tribulations, but you ran the race the right way. You came on the other side because of the Word of God, not because of anything great about me. It is the Word of God that transformed you. Romans 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, by the renewing, the renewing of your mind, the washing and the renewing and the cleansing power of God will change you. Stop being consumed. See, I come here to confront the devil. See, he don't like me. Because I'm bold about the gospel. And I'm telling you to repent and come back home. God is merciful. Everybody will leave you, God will never leave you nor forsake you. Everybody else will be gone. Everybody in my life that I used to be around and playing ball with, yeah, I'll see them from time to time. Matter of fact, I'm doing a charity golf outing June 26th with 86 matches for fighting addiction, to raise money for people struggling with addiction. And see, this is the work that God calls us to do, Pastor. We go back, like you said, this, this is not about me, this is about helping somebody else. See, if some of you can get over yourself, Oh, glory to God. If you can get over your own little ego, which is three-letter word, easing God out, and thinking you are all that in the bag of chips, the devil been lying to you. Because, see, he will keep you in that same place, and you'll wonder why you're not prospering and you're standing in the same place, and you're not going forward, and nothing's really never happening. Because you don't belong to the kingdom of God. See, when you belong to the kingdom of God, you do kingdom work, and God will take care of you. See, God takes care of his people. When you understand who you are, when you understand that you're a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, now you get to eat from a land that you don't even know about. It's a whole nother land. It's not this land here. It's God's land that he opens up the door and he gives you favor with man and he opens up the door so you can bring somebody else in and you can share the love of Christ to somebody else. Get over yourself. I know that's not a very popular message, but you know what? Sometimes it needs to be preached. I guess the Holy Spirit wants to preach this service. So I just roll with him, whatever he tells me to say, huh? Okay. Let's do it. Because there's some people in here that God's trying to reach. There's a lot of men in here that God's trying to reach. Men are holding on to junk. Men are holding on to stuff. I want to be successful. Oh, I'm more successful than I've ever been in my life. And free. Don't even worry about where it's coming from, but it's coming. Because why? I don't work for me. I work for the Lord. See, when you stop working for you and you work for the Lord, the Lord will take care of you. Because his promises are deep. His promises are real. And this is what he promised you. And his promises, they're so deep. I will be with you. In the midnight hour when you're crying, he'll be with you. I will protect you. God has always protected me. Number two. Number three, I will be your strength. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. 
See, I have the strength and wisdom and knowledge. It's because of him. You can have the strength and wisdom and knowledge too because of him. It's his peace that he gives to you. It's his strength that he gives to you. It's his love that he gives to you. You, and then number four is, I will answer you. I love this so much because he says, I will answer you, but I will answer you on my time. My time. See, I didn't want to become a preacher. God said, you're going to become a preacher. I said, you got the wrong guy. He said, no, I got the right guy. I said, I was a sinner and I needed to save you. He says, I know, that's why I called you. I said, I'm not qualified. He said, no one is qualified. I qualify to call. See, when you align yourself up ready and to be right, he will speak to you and answer you. I will provide for you. I will give you peace. Number seven, I will always love you. I'm here to tell you in this church today, San Bernardino Church, the way. There is no one greater to walk with than Jesus. There's no one. Whatever your life circumstances are, whatever your trials and your tribulations, Jesus will take care of it for you. I don't know why he do it, but he do do it. When I live according to the biblical principles, when I tithe and give to the church, not give to Nordstrom, the mall, shopping, shoes, clothes. When I give to the kingdom, God blesses me even more. Because you know why he know he could trust me to give it right back. Because it doesn't belong to me anyway. It belongs to the Lord. And those that blesses the kingdom of God. See, me and Tracy don't just give 10% of our earnings. We give 25, we give 30, we give over and beyond. And you know what God steps in and do when you're like that and he knows that you're a soul winner and you care about people? He gives you more. And he gives you favor. And he opens up doors that you cannot open up. He brings business to you. He brings things to you. And you just keep giving. See, we have gotten spoiled with who we are in society and living under everything else except God's will. I, glory to God. I don't ever want to be not under God's will ever again. Because I know I'm not supposed to be here alive and well and preaching, but God spared me. So I know success and money is not going to change me, and it's not going to change you. It's there to make your situation better, but it's there for you to look at the kingdom and understand the importance of being a kingdom builder. And if you could ever get that in your heart, see, God is not after anything. As I get ready to wind down, I'm going to get to the book of John. God is not after anything. God does not need me. God does not need you, but God will use you for his glory. But he does not need me. God does not need money. God needs your heart. He goes on to say, David is a man after my own heart. David was wickedness and womanizer and put his best man Uriah on the front line so he could have his wife Bathsheba. And God goes on to say, he's a man after my own heart. God knows the heart of a man. You, one thing you need to understand, we can fool each other, but we can't fool him. They all was just like us. They all had issues. Moses, a speech impediment. He couldn't even speak. God used him mightily to lead the Israelites out of bondage. They couldn't even receive it. They could have been in the promised land 11 days. They complained so much. God sent them in the wilderness for another 40 years. <laughs> I love it. If you want to stay stuck, God will leave you stuck. You know why? Because he's a gentleman. And he does not pressure anybody to do anything. He allows it to be a free will. And what I mean by that, he says, come as you are. All your broken pieces, 
all your hurts, your habits, your hangups, your dysfunction, your loneliness, your depression. He says, bring it to me, bring it to the foot of the cross because I'm the only one that can heal it. And see, we go, we go everywhere else. We go to every doctor and every this to get fixed, but there's only one person that's can fix you. That's Jesus. There's only one person. It's only, because all you, all you need is a touch from Jesus. Can I get my worship guys come play? As I wind down, if God didn't forgive sinners like me, heaven will be empty. He, it's something about broken people. See, everybody else points their fingers at broken people's lives, and when you're pointing at somebody else's thing, life, three fingers are pointing back at you as your own life. God takes the broken piece of one life, and he puts it together for his good, and he puts it in a place to deliver his message so people can understand he's God. See, I couldn't transform myself. The transformation came in my life because of a touch from Jesus. That's all you need is a touch from Jesus. And it could change the course of where you're going and who you think you are and what you're doing and become the best of everything that God created you to be. Man, I, I, I just, oh, hallelujah. I just didn't know that it was this good. I didn't know. I didn't know he, I didn't know he, wraps his arms around you like this every day to bring you to wholeness. I travel 270 times out of a year and on the road all the time by myself. And I'm not really by myself because the Holy Ghost is always with me. You know, and he wraps his arms around me like this and say, I got you. You won't know that if you don't know him. You'll only feel that and experience that when you know him. And you know everything is okay. And that's what he's trying to get back to his church and his people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from these worldly wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. He will heal your land if you understand. Now, as I come to this place of closing, this word that needs to stick inside of you today is this is what you need to be with God. You need to understand this word. One word, fat, F-A-T. I ain't talking about anybody in particular. I'm talking about a word, fat. You need to le learn to be faithful, accountable, and teachable. You need to learn to be faithful to God, accountable to God, and teachable by God through His Word. But if you don't have that discipline, you'll never experience the goodness and the miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope on this Father day, Father's Day experience that you have come here and you've got a chance to hear the gospel of Jesus, a man that is holy and righteous, a man that would take your sins to the cross. And he would be nailed to the cross and he would shed his blood for me and you. So we can have life, so we can experience the abundance of life, so we can experience the joy and have the freedom to be here to help somebody else. If you can get over yourself, you can get into God. But if you can't get over yourself, you can never experience God. Because the enemy, he has a plan 
He has a plan to keep you in bondage. He has a plan to keep those chains on you. So you can't be broken from those chains until you push through, until you push through and you come to the cross and you say, Jesus, you are Lord over my life. You are king over my life. Not social media, not her talk, that talk. But you are. In the book of John, it's about believing. The book of John is so powerful. I learned so much from the book of John because you learn about Jesus so much in the book of John. And his miracles, turning water into wine, feeding 5,000, raising Lazarus from the dead, getting Daryl Strawberry out of the pit, putting him in the pulpit. This is Jesus bad, man. He's some kind of God, man. When, he, when, 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 when you encounter encounter with him and have this relationship with him and you're serious about it and you're not straddling the fence no more, you're not playing a game, you're going to experience his amazing love. John 3, he told Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, teacher, leader, unless one is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, we've all been born, but he's talking about the second birth, which is the spiritual birth. He's talking about born of the spirit. Nicodemus was confused didn't understand, but he's telling you the spiritual birth is greater than the natural. Well, we have to come here in the natural, but the spiritual birth is your birth for you to go spiritually into God's plan. Hallelujah. John 4, the woman at the well. I love this story because the woman was asking Jesus about a drink of water. Was he thirsty? And Jesus was trying to share with the woman if you drink this water, you'll never thirst again. And he was talking about him because he's the living water. See, ever since I've been drinking this living water of the Word of God, I have never, ever been thirsty again, ever been thirsty again in my life because I've been drinking the living water. It is living water. It brings you to a life and a life of fullness, happiness, joy, peace, freedom, love, and victory over everything. You don't have to have a crutch. I don't have a crutch on anything. The only crutch I have is Jesus. John 8, don't be like the scribes and the Pharisees. They wanted to stone the woman because she was caught in adultery. And Jesus was stooping down and he was writing in the sand and he raised up. He says, he without sin cast the first stone. From the oldest to the youngest dropped the stones because guess what, they all had fallen short. You know what I love about Jesus when you read that text? Jesus asked the woman, where are your accusers? Has anyone accused you? She said, no. He says, neither do I. Go and sin no more. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. But I'm talking about having the right heart. talking about us as people, all of us. The devil don't want you to have victory. He want to keep you right where you're at. That's his job. But I'm telling you today, you can have victory. When you surrender yourself to Christ and whatever habit, hurt, hang up you have, men, Man, you need to get these principles down in your life. You're not having victory because you don't have principles. You got worldly things, but you don't have principles. You get these, you will arrive to be the man that God called you to be. And he will bless you and he will give you everything that your heart desires. Because now you will make it not only about you, but you'll make it about his kingdom. That's why he created us first, to be the man, be the head, but to follow the principles. John 5, this one particular man sat at a pool called Bethesda, and he sat there for 38 years. You know what I love about Jesus? God, this man sat at the pool for 38 years. Jesus didn't ask that man one question about his condition in that text. You know why? Because he already knew the condition of that man. You know what Jesus said? Do you want to be well? I 
How many people have ever told you truly that, do you want to be well? That's what Jesus is saying to some of you today. Do you want to be well? He says, come to me and I'll make you well. And if that's you on the sound of my voice, I want you to come right now to the cross so God can make you well in those areas in your life that you're lacking. Don't worry about what anybody else is thinking. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in. Come. Come from where you're at. Come. Come right now. Come. God says come. Come. Get out of that seat right now. Come. God's got a plan for you. He's got a future for you. He's got a plan for your life. He's got a plan for your kids. Come. 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 Tell the devil no. Tell the devil no. No more, devil. Loosen them. Let them go right now in the name of Jesus. We call them out right now. Come. That's it, brother. Come. 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 Right now. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. Keep coming right now. Right now. He's saying, do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? Do you want to be free? Let go of those things. Let go of those worldly desires. You don't have to settle in for that. You don't have to settle. Keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah, we're going to run the devil off today. Glory to God. 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 That's right. This is your day, brother. This is your day. God is talking to you. Receive it. That's it right there. Tears are real. We got to stop playing this game like I'm not hurting. We're hurting. The devil's going to kill you. Or he's going to have somebody else out there kill you. It's the people. It's us. We're all people. We're all the same. We're all broken. The only hope is in Jesus. It's not in a ball game. It's in Jesus. People are hurting. Our young people are hurting. Our young people are suffering because of sin. For the wages of sin is killing our young people. It's got them all locked into, if I'm not important to social media, I'll just kill myself. The devil is a lie. The social media is not real. That's all foolishness. I didn't come here to play games. Wherever I go, God sent me to preach. Bring my people home. Tell them I love them. God is crazy about you. You young people, follow Jesus. Don't follow all this other stuff. Don't get locked into this. Sin will take you so far and take you down, and it will keep you there for a very long time. Hear me from a man that experienced it. Any more? Some of you men need to get out of those seats. Y'all hold on to those baseball uniforms. You need to be running down here to Jesus. need to open your eyes for real. Have an encounter, experience with God. A baseball game is not going to save you. It's only going to make you happy for a man. If my team lose, I'm feeling sad. If my team win, I'm going crazy. That's not going to save you. That's not going to change your circumstances. That's not going to help your family. That's not going to help your kids. What's going to help your kids is having a true relationship with Christ and surrendering your life to Christ and walking in a different way, talking a different way, and acting a different way. I'm not saying you cannot enjoy the ball game. You can. But this part of your life is important. We live in a society that got our men stuck. I do a lot of men's conference. They won't even come. They're stuck in porn. They're stuck in everything. They're sitting there looking in all these chat rooms and all these different places, and they're looking for satisfaction. And they think nobody see them. God sitting right there watching you. But what I love about God is He's merciful. Anymore. Seeing a lot of young girls up here. I'm glad to see that glory to God. Where's our young boys at? We want them to be everything. Try to grow up to be a man before they are a man. But you need to learn how to pour, you dads need to learn how to pour these biblical principles into them. They need to see you living Christ. You know, and I, and, I, and I say that 
in a good way because my kids now today and, and they look at me and people be like, well, don't you know who your dad is? And he's Daryl Strawberry and he was a major league basketball player and, and he had drug problems and he was arrested. My kids be like, uh-uh, my dad's a preacher. You don't have to preach to them. I don't preach to my kids. My daughter Diamond to tell you, I don't preach to my kids. I'm just a living example. That's the way my mother was, a living example. She didn't preach to me. She was a living example. And I've learned that, and I'm, I'm leaving the legacy that my mother left for me. I'm leaving it for my kids, that Jesus is Lord. And everybody's got their own thing that they have to go through. But they see. Some more of you dads need to come. I need to pray for you, too. Come down. Get up out of your seat. Come on, right now. In the name of Jesus. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come, dads. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. This ain't a bad thing. This ain't about macho. It's about, it's about being real. There you go. It's about being real. That's it. That's it, guys. Family life is important. This is important. We don't do this. This is not a show. This is important. Come on, let them come down. Let them get down to the altar. Come to the cross. Come to the cross. Come to the cross. Come to the cross. Thank you, God. 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 Yes. Yes. That's what it's all about. Talk about what other people think. I can care less what they think about me. It's about me being the right man that God called me to be for my kids and being the right example. What society think about me, it's none of my business. What people think about me, Daryl Strawberry's gonna be in some church on Sunday. I don't know if I'm home or somewhere preaching, I'm gonna be in church. You ain't fooling me no more, devil. Devil fooling you sitting, got you sitting on the couch watching the game, worried about the game, and your wife going to church to intercede for you. It's your time to stand up. God has created you guys for greatness. And this is where it happens in the church. This is where you find out for real who you are. That tear in your eye, God's been talking to you. And he's telling you to obey me. I'll take care of the rest for you. But if you obey me and follow my wills and my principles, he'll do it. Somebody's been laboring for you, praying for you. Stop with the foolishness. Thus said the Lord. To all you men that are here today, I'm proud of you. It takes a real man to stand up. I know I'm going a little bit over, but it takes a real man to stand up. I'm going to pray real quick for you, and I'm going to turn it over to the pastor. But it takes a real man to stand up. A real man. So sick of this worldly foolishness, and we compromise into it just to compromise and fit in. You don't have to fit in. Be the man that God called you to be. Father, we love you, honor you, praise you. Father, I thank you for every soul that's here today. Father, the men that stepped up and gathered here today, Father, I pray that you would crown them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. I pray that you have spoken a word over their life that they will receive and know that it is time for me to become the man that you created me to be. This is the day. Today is Father's Day, Father, and you have given us this day to grow. You have given us today to be challenged, to be stretched. And it's good, Father, when we are challenged because when we convicted, we step out and we receive your will for our life. And I pray for every soul that's here today. I pray for our young people. I pray for the young girls that are coming down to the cross. I pray for the young boys that are coming down to the cross, Father, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. There'll be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I bind every assignment rebuke to the devour the enemy has over their life. We take his hands off of their life right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the church. We thank you for the body. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. Father, we send this petition up to you and we ask that you would seal it over every person that's here at the altar today. In Jesus' name, here's Pastor Garcia awesome. for you. Let's give, let's give Daryl Strawberry a hand for 
sacrificing his Father's Day to be with us. How many know that's a big deal? His, I met his yeah. daughter. She's yeah, on the right front now. row today. Yeah, and she right goes, now. I surprised my dad. He, she lives in Las Vegas. He didn't know I was coming. But God brought his daughter here so they could celebrate Father's Day too. So we're gonna, I want to pray with everyone here just a second. But uh, um, as we leave here, go out there. We have, a, I mean, we have the car show. We have some vendors that came. We didn't pay them to come. They came. Let's bless them by supporting their, their whatever. They're selling the uh, snow cones, all kinds of stuff. Let's bless them that they would say, man, that church really blessed us. It was worth it. And we got a lot of fun stuff out there. I'll be out there as well. Let's pray really quick. I'm proud of every one of you guys. Every one of you made a decision to follow Jesus. Say this with me. First step. This is my first step, and this is what I want you to do. You'll never be good at anything that you're not consistent in. Put in some effort. You came today. Let it be the first time. That not let it be the first of many times that you show up to the house of God. Come Wednesday. Come Sunday. You used to party like it was 1999. Live for Jesus like it's 1999. Get my. Don't give the devil more than you give Jesus. People say, where you're at? You used to take used to be gone and people missing you where, where are you and you were on a run be on a run for jesus for the rest of your life come on you wasted enough time i'm so proud of you welcome to god's family we love you and we're going to grow from here let's pray say jesus i confess you as my lord and savior i believe that you died on the cross you suffered to pay the price for the wrong i've done forgive me set me free from all addiction bad habits anger depression anxiety fear guilt shame i receive you as my lord and savior i receive the free gift of eternal life today i'm saved and jesus I'll follow you for the rest of my life. Fill me now with your spirit. Make me new. I am born again today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. All you got to do, take your next step. Habits, keep coming to church at least once a week. You got 168 hours. Give two to Jesus. Once a week, and I guarantee it'll be the best investment you've ever made. I want to make sure we need some help here. Pray with anyone. I, I, we need, I need another gentleman here. I want to make sure we pray with you. God bless you.